Well, we have three unusual cars here today. The one thing they have in common is they do not run on gas, which is ironic because this show is being hosted by two gas bags. So explain exactly what we have here. Well, Jay, we've got a 1979 Mercedes 300D that runs on biodiesel. We've got a 1989 Morgan Plus 8 that runs on propane and a 1953 Paxton Phoenix designed to run on steam. Right. Let's start with the Mercedes. Okay. It's interesting that you mentioned that we have three unusual cars. I think that for most people, this would look like a really usual car. It does. In fact, I own one. I'm 1983. It was my first new car. I bought a Mercedes diesel. And you could run that thing half a million miles. It was unbelievable. Well, of course, the advantages of the diesel engine are many. Uh, the fact that it has very uh, low operating costs. There are fewer parts than there are in a traditional gasoline engine. Disadvantage, really slow. Well, again, think about the period of time that we're in, Jay. Mm -hmm. High performance was really not the word on everybody's lips at that point. Plus, people were really beginning to be very conscious about the environment. And the diesel engine was indeed invented to be run on a wide variety of fuels. So biodiesel was a very, very attractive option in the early 80s for people to do. Uh, who were environmentally conscious and also wanted to save money. You know, there's this idea that you get into your biodiesel-powered car, you drive to dinner at your favorite Chinese restaurant. When you finish dinner, you ask them for the check and also for the oil that they fried your pork fried rice in right. and just put it in the car and you drive home. Not quite that simple. No, no, it's not that simple at all. <laughs> Tell us about the second car. This looks just like any other Morgan sports car. Fascinating family-owned company, building these very traditional English sports cars. And again, with the coming of emission standards in the 1980s and 70s, it became very difficult for small manufacturers to meet the standards that the U.S. government had put out. Well, tell us the advantages of propane. Well, propane burns more efficiently than gasoline does, so it actually provides a higher octane and uh, better combustion, which gives you more performance, especially right. uh, great for a sports car like this. Right, right. But the problem, of course, is the fact that the infrastructure for getting propane is not that for getting gasoline. Well, let's take a look now at probably the most unusual and fascinating car here. The 1953 Paxton Phoenix. This is one of my favorite cars in the world, primarily because it is the product of the imagination of a single man. Robert Paxton McCulloch was the head of a very large manufacturing company that manufactured two-stroke engines. And he thought, like many Americans after World War II, wouldn't it be great if we could create a world-beating sports GT luxury car? It's fiberglass, mm -hmm. when American manufacturers were just beginning to work in fiberglass, and as you can tell, the fiberglass work is to an extremely high standard. It's really such an interesting, interesting car, and of course, the great Jay Leno connection with this is that McCulloch experimented with a number of possible power plants for this car, including very, very sophisticated four-cylinder, eight-piston, uh, two-stroke engine, as well as a steam engine developed by your good friend, Abner Mr. Doble. Doble. Yeah. Now, for people who don't know, and most people don't, Abner Doble produced the greatest steam car ever made. It was the only steam car where you turn a key and you pull away. I have two of them. They're fascinating, but like most engineers, he was not a businessman. And every car he built was a prototype. He built 40, and each one was different. And eventually, it, the, the whole thing just didn't work. But the principle behind it was really fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And Jay, let's just take a look at some of the details of this yeah. car because they are just absolutely fascinating. It's really, it's quite a luxurious car. You can see it's built to a very high standard. Uh, one of the reasons why the car never did uh, proceed to production was that they kept working on the steam power plant and they didn't know when it was going to be finished. Right. This car was going to cost somewhere around ten or eleven thousand right. dollars in the early 1950s. It's just wonderful. So, which of these three cars has appreciated the most in the last five years? I gotta go with the Paxton because this is a piece of automotive history. Your pick is the Paxton. I pick the Paxton. Say that three times real fast. Your pick is the Paxton. Your pick is the Paxton. Yeah, okay, I rest my case. So, which of these three cars has appreciated the most in the last five years? The Mercedes W123 is indestructible, an icon of Mercedes quality. A car like this one, five years ago, might have cost you about $15,000. Right. Today, that would be about $20,000. The Morgan. Five years ago, a Morgan like this would cost about $69,000. Today, this car would be worth about $73,000. And people are actually seeking out some of the LPG ones because there are so few left. Right, Most right. have been reconverted to gas. And last but not least, the Paxton Phoenix. Five years ago, if you could have bought this car, it would have probably cost you around $175,000. Today, with a great interest in one-offs 
prototypes, and concept cars. You couldn't touch this car for less than $375,000. So our appreciation winner, the Paxton Phoenix. So you're saying I was right? Abner is looking down on you and smiling. There you go. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.